Long ago, Ghana was known as the Gold Coast, and it had many stories. One of these stories is about Aku, an orphan girl with only one arm, and it's a story that will touch your heart deeply. So grab something cozy, like a soft feather, and let's enjoy this old tale together. Once upon a time in Ghana, there was a man named Mr. Kuma and his wife Kukua. They desperately wanted a child and spent all their money trying to have one, but they had no success. Despite their efforts and the wealth they used, they remained childless. This situation brought them great sadness, as having a child was their deepest wish. One day, a local priest came to Mr. Kuma and Kukua's home. He brought news that the gods had finally listened to their wishes for a child. However, there was a catch. They needed to make a sacrifice to get this blessing. Kukua, who was very upset about people making fun of them for not having kids, felt desperate. She told the priest that she would do anything to have a child. She was tired of the taunts and the sadness of being childless and was ready to face any challenge or pay any price to become a mother. The local priest gave Kukua an egg to eat, which was a way for her to show she agreed to their deal for a child. After that, the priest left. Kuma, her husband, wasn't pleased about the idea of having a child after making an uncertain sacrifice. He had doubts and fears about what this might mean for them. On the other hand, Kukua didn't share her husband's concerns. She was set on having a child and was willing to face whatever came with the decision. A few months after the visit from the priest, Kukua became pregnant and gave birth to a beautiful girl named Aku. Sadly, not long after Aku's birth, Kukua got sick with a mysterious illness and passed away. Mr. Kuma, now alone and worried about his daughter's future, decided to remarry to ensure Aku would be cared for. He married a woman named Abina, who already had two daughters from a previous relationship, both older than Aku. Mr. Kuma hoped this new family structure would provide Aku with the maternal care and siblings she needed after the loss of her mother. One day, Mr. Kuma, who was both a farmer and a hunter, went to town to buy a trap for catching wild animals in the bush. He planned to use it the next day, so he stored it at home. However, a strange and unfortunate incident occurred. Aku, still a young child and unaware of the trap's danger, started playing with it. She didn't understand how it worked or how risky it was. While playing, she accidentally triggered the trap and it snapped shut on her hand. Aku's stepmother, who never showed her any love, witnessed her crying in pain, caught in the trap. However, she did nothing to help. Instead, she chose to walk away from the distressing scene, ignoring Aku's suffering. This cruel indifference showed her true feelings towards Aku. When Aku's father, Mr. Kuma, finally came home, it was too late. The trap had severely injured Aku's hand, to the point where it was beyond saving. Seeing his daughter Aku in such a painful and pitiful condition, with only one arm, deeply upset Mr. Kuma. He found it unbearable to see her suffer so much. The sight of Aku's agony and her drastic change in circumstances weighed heavily on him. Struggling with his emotions and unable to cope with the pain of seeing his daughter in such a state, Mr. Kuma reached a point of despair. One day, overwhelmed by sadness and feeling helpless, he went to his farm and tragically chose to end his own life. This act left young Aku in the care of her cruel stepmother, a woman who had shown no love or kindness to her. Aku, the youngest in her family, had to do all the housework, cook, work on the farm, and clean the yard by herself. Her stepmother made sure that Aku did everything at home, while her own daughters did nothing. Often, even though Aku was the one who cooked the meals, she wasn't allowed to eat with the rest. She had to make do with less appealing food, while her stepsisters enjoyed the best dishes. 
This unfair treatment showed the harsh reality of Aku's life with her stepmother and stepsisters. They made her life difficult every day, giving her more work than she could handle and denying her the comforts of home. This ongoing mistreatment was cruel and showed a clear lack of kindness or fairness towards Aku, making her daily life a constant struggle against neglect and injustice. Aku grew up always hiding her amputated hand from everyone outside her home. Whenever she went out, she made sure to cover it, although her stepmother and stepsisters were aware of her condition. In Ghana, where traditions and cultural festivals are important, each tribe celebrates its heritage uniquely. One significant event was when the king announced a special festival. This was not just any celebration. It was a time when unmarried women, including virgins, were asked to present themselves before the king. The purpose of this gathering was for the king to select the most beautiful among them to become his wife, in addition to the wives he already had. This tradition was a big deal and brought excitement and anticipation to the community. It was a chance for families to showcase their daughters, hoping that the king might choose one of them as his bride. For Aku, however, the situation was complicated. While the festival was an opportunity for many, she felt sidelined due to her physical condition, believing it made her ineligible for such honor and recognition. The event highlighted the cultural significance of marriage and royal favor in her society, casting a shadow over Aku's personal challenges and insecurities. Aku's stepmother prepared her daughters for the festival, dressing them in beautiful clothes to catch the king's attention, hoping he would choose one of them as his bride. They were adorned in their best outfits, aiming to impress and win the king's favor. In contrast, Aku was given old, tattered clothes to wear. Her stepmother deliberately dressed her poorly to ensure the king wouldn't pick her. But Aku wasn't even interested in the festival or being chosen by the king. She felt disqualified because of her disability, believing that her amputated hand made her unworthy in the eyes of the king and the community. Aku knew that it was considered inappropriate, even taboo, for the king to marry someone with her condition, so she didn't harbor any hopes or desires to be selected, focusing instead on her own reality and the challenges she faced at home. During the festival, where young unmarried women were presented to the king, Aku, hiding her amputated arm, was among them. Despite her attempts to stay unnoticed, the king was drawn to her modest beauty and chose her as his third wife. This decision surprised everyone, especially since Aku had tried to conceal her disability. Her natural grace and attractiveness caught the king's eye, leading to her unexpected selection. Aku's stepsisters, jealous and upset, couldn't accept that she was chosen over them. They ran to their mother, weeping and expressing their frustration. Their mother, sharing their jealousy, started plotting to embarrass Aku, hoping to make the king regret his choice and possibly even leave Aku. This twist in Aku's fate stirred emotions and scheming within her family, showcasing the envy and malice she faced, even in her moment of royal favor. During their honeymoon, Aku felt it was important to reveal her secret to the king. She only had one arm. She was ready to leave, thinking that her disability would make it unacceptable for the king to be with her, as it was considered a taboo. However, the king's reaction was unexpected. After learning about Aku's condition, his affection for her grew stronger. He empathized with her situation and admired her honesty. The king asked Aku to keep her disability hidden from others in the palace to protect her from any negative judgment or consequences. Aku agreed to this request, touched by the king's understanding and support. This moment deepened their bond, showing that the king valued Aku for who she was beyond her physical appearance 
and was willing to defy traditional norms to keep her by his side. In the palace, Aku was well liked by everyone except the king's first wife, who harbored a strong dislike for her. Despite various attempts to undermine Aku, the first wife couldn't succeed in bringing her down. On a visit to her stepmother, Aku was asked about her life in the palace and any issues she faced. Aku honestly shared that she was treated well and loved by many, except for the king's first wife, but reassured her stepmother that she was managing fine. This conversation revealed Aku's positive outlook and resilience, despite the challenges and animosity from the king's first wife, showing her ability to remain content and unaffected by the negativity in her new royal life. The saying, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, came to life when Aku's stepmother decided to act on her jealousy. She secretly sent a messenger to the palace to arrange a meeting with the king's first wife, who also disliked Aku. During their meeting, Aku's stepmother revealed Aku's secret. She had only one arm, which she always kept hidden. The stepmother used this information, hoping to create an alliance with the first wife against Aku. She thought that by sharing this secret, they could work together to undermine Aku's position in the palace. This move was strategic, aiming to turn the king's first wife into an ally by exploiting their common dislike for Aku. It showed the lengths to which Aku's stepmother would go to sabotage Aku's newfound status and happiness in the royal household. The first wife was taken aback by the revelation that Aku had only one arm. She quickly spread the news, stirring up gossip among the palace and eventually bringing the matter to the attention of the palace elders. The elders were disturbed by this information, seeing it as a grave issue. They confronted the king, accusing him of hiding this abominable fact. The king, however, denied having any prior knowledge of Aku's disability. The situation escalated as the elders decided to organize another festival. The plan was to have all the king's wives present themselves, allowing the elders to identify any with disabilities, specifically Aku. According to their traditions, hiding such a condition was a serious offense, and the punishment was severe, including potentially being offered as a sacrifice to the gods. This rule was part of their ancestral laws, passed down through generations, leaving the king with little room to maneuver. The upcoming festival would put Aku in grave danger, testing the king's loyalty and the palace's adherence to ancient customs. This turn of events put Aku's fate in jeopardy, highlighting the rigid and unforgiving nature of the traditional laws governing their society. Aku became aware of the dreadful news about the upcoming festival, where her secret would be unveiled. This knowledge left her feeling isolated and desperate, as she realized that the king would not be able to save her due to the rigid traditions of their society. Overwhelmed by the thought of her imminent death and the humiliation it would bring to the king, Aku decided to escape her fate. On the day of the festival, she chose not to present herself to the community, knowing well that it would lead to her execution. Instead, she fled to the vast river Birum, a place where she believed she could end her suffering by herself, avoiding the public spectacle of her demise. At the river's edge, alone and unobserved, Aku was on the brink of surrendering to the waters to end her pain. However, as she rushed toward the river, intending to throw herself in, she heard someone urgently calling her name. Aku! 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 Don't end your life! She halted and turned around, searching for the source of the voice. To her astonishment, she saw a towering and remarkable figure unlike any man in her kingdom. This man, who seemed more like a spirit in human guise, radiated a powerful yet benevolent presence. He informed Aku that he was fully aware of her troubles and expressed his readiness to assist her. 
Aku was taken aback when the mysterious man called her by name. She asked him if he knew her, and he replied, Yes, I've known you since before you were born. With a commanding presence, he began to chant, summoning a massive python from the river. To Aku's astonishment, the snake emerged and, upon the man's command, opened its mouth wide. The man then urged Aku to be brave and place her amputated arm inside the python's mouth. Despite her fears, Aku mustered her courage and did as instructed, inserting her arm into the serpent's gaping jaws. As soon as her arm was inside, the man performed a spell, and within moments, Aku withdrew her arm to find it miraculously restored, now adorned with golden bracelets. This transformation was both astonishing and surreal, as Aku witnessed the power of the man's magic firsthand. The once amputated limb was now a perfectly formed arm, enhanced with glittering gold, signifying not just a physical restoration, but also a symbol of newfound strength and fortune. This incredible event marked a pivotal change in Aku's life, turning her previous misfortune into a miraculous blessing that defied her tragic past. After miraculously restoring Aku's arm, the spiritual man advised her to conceal it and return to the festival as if nothing had occurred. Upon her arrival, Aku found that the palace elders and the entire kingdom, including the chief, were looking for her. During the festival, one elder instructed everyone to carry wood, showcasing their ability to use both arms. While others complied, Aku refrained, leading to a poignant moment for the king. He watched her with a heavy heart, believing it would be the last time he would see Aku, the one he cherished deeply. The king's sadness stemmed from the anticipation of losing Aku due to the belief that she had only one arm, which would be revealed during this task, fulfilling the tragic prophecy that had hung over them. This moment was fraught with tension and emotion, as Aku's secret hung in the balance, threatening to unfold in front of the entire assembly. In a moment teeming with tension and emotion, the king's first wife called out to Aku during the festival, her voice sharp and accusing. Hey Aku, why aren't you using both your arms to gather the wood? She demanded. Aku, maintaining her composure, chose not to respond. The queen, relentless, pushed further, insinuating, or is it because you are disabled having just one arm? The air thickened with suspense as the crowd absorbed her words. The palace elders, aware of the whispers about Aku's condition, intervened, admonishing the queen for her harsh accusations. Please, queen, stop this, they urged, emphasizing the gravity of falsely accusing the king's wife. They hinted at the dire consequences, suggesting that such a claim, if proven, could lead to Aku's death. The queen stood firm, insisting on her belief. Suddenly, Aku's stepmother stepped forward, supporting the queen's claim with a bold assertion that Aku, indeed, had only one arm, elevating the drama. She appealed to the elders and the king, invoking the gods as her witnesses. The scene was charged with a mix of disbelief and anticipation as the two women stood against Aku, challenging her place in the kingdom and risking her very life. The air was heavy with the weight of the impending decision as all eyes turned to Aku, waiting for her response to the accusations that threatened her existence. In a heart-wrenching moment of desperation, the king found himself cornered by the accusations against Aku. With few words and heavy with emotion, he sought to intimidate the accusers, hoping to end the relentless attack on her character. What if Aku reveals her arm and your accusations prove false, he challenged, his voice a mix of anger and despair. The air was thick with tension, the crowd silent, as the queen and Aku's stepmother boldly confronted the king's challenge. Their response was dramatic, laden with the weight of their conviction. If we are wrong, 
they proclaimed to the king and all the spectators, then let us be the ones to face the sacrifice. Their words hung in the air, a solemn vow that heightened the stakes of the unfolding drama. The sadness of the situation was palpable. The king, struggling to protect Aku, faced his own wife and her ally, who were unyielding in their quest to see Aku condemned. The scene was fraught with emotional turmoil, as the possibility of a tragic outcome loomed large. The entire assembly awaited the resolution of this heart-rending conflict, with Aku's fate hanging precariously in the balance. In a solemn and heavy-hearted moment, the king turned to Aku, his voice filled with sadness. Please, he implored, show us your arms and pick up the wood. The atmosphere was charged with emotion. The crowd hushed in anticipation and sorrow as Aku slowly unveiled her arm. To everyone's astonishment, her once hidden limb was not just restored, but was exquisitely adorned with gold, glimmering under the sun. Her arm, a hidden treasure, left the audience in awe. The queen and stepmother, witnessing the revelation, were overwhelmed with shock and fear, their faces draining of color as they began to sweat and gasp for air. The king, addressing the gathered crowd, revealed the truth behind Aku's concealed arm. She had hidden it, not because of a deformity, but to protect the precious gold and jewels that it bore from potential thieves. From this day forward, the king proclaimed, she will be known as Aku Sika, which means Gold Aku. The king then turned to the queen and stepmother, whose faces were etched with panic and desperation. He decreed that they be executed as a warning to others, their pleas for mercy falling on deaf ears. You swore an oath to the gods, the king reminded them sternly, and you must uphold your vow. Their desperate cries and the king's resolute decree filled the air, sealing their fate and ending their scheme. After the stunning revelation, the king took swift action, executing the queen and stepmother for their deceit. He then crowned Aku, now known as Aku Sika, the queen of the land, honoring her resilience and the truth of her story. Aku Sika's tale became legendary, woven into the fabric of Ghanaian folklore. It resonated through the melodies of traditional highlife music, immortalized in a song by the late Nana Ampadu, and depicted in Ghanaian drama films. The narrative of Aku Sika teaches valuable lessons about the destructive nature of jealousy and the importance of treating those in our care with kindness and love. It underscores the principle that love should always prevail, guiding our actions and decisions. This story, rich in cultural significance and moral teaching, is a treasure of Ghanaian heritage that continues to inspire and instruct. I encourage everyone who is captivated by the story of Aku Sika to share where you are enjoying this tale from. Your location and experiences add to the rich tapestry of this story's journey around the world. Let's celebrate the global love for African stories together. Please tell us in the comments where you are watching from, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to spread the beauty and wisdom of African folklore far and wide.